devoted customer and that I travel across London for the dish that you are about to, to show me how to prepare. It's not cook, because there's no cooking, right? Right, but right. I feel like I'm about to unlock the secrets. What is it, what is it, what's your full-blown title for it? Well, we call it Nikkei Yellowtail Sashimi with truffle. Right, uh, so just let me clear this up, right? Because I thought Yellowtail was tuna, but it's not. No, so I'm yellow exposing my ignorance here that's already. Okay. That's why we're here. So yellow fin is from the tuna family mm -hmm. and yellow tail is kingfish. Ah. So if you go to Australia or somewhere and you get kingfish, it's like the highest grade white fish you can get. Yeah. I'm not even Hold on, right down here. Yeah. Yeah. And kingfish, kingfish is well, king. Okay. So, okay, so I'm dealing with the royalty of So yeah, so, so this fish. is kingfish. Okay. Absolutely. Would I get that in my local fishmongers? I hope not. No, I, I don't think you can get that in the local place, but you can get it in your local Chateau Mate. <laughs> we can send it to you. But you, like we said before, you can do this dish with salmon, with sea bass. It's just the best with yellow tail. It's the best with this. I've had it with sea bass. It's not quite as kick ass. Sometimes we mix it for you when you come. We've got crab in there. I know, the crab's nice actually. The crab is nice. Okay. Yeah. So we'll start to prepare some things. And uh, you're going to help us? I am, but I'm scared. Look, this knife. A month to make. Yeah, handmade the blade of mine. Yeah, it's got the knife maker's signature on it, and it's worth how much? Hundreds of thousands of pounds. <laughs> There's a way you do this here, and obviously. So we're gonna just slice it. Yeah. Just go through one end. Oh, I can do that. I really can. Yeah. In the meantime, I'll cut this. Okay. Okay, so thinly sliced. Your knife is absolutely amazing, by the way. Oh my god. Making my little kitchen double at home feel like, you know, kids play. So we're going to cut the Dutch finger chili. Dutch finger chili. Does it matter if you use any other kind of chili? Yeah, you can use, you can use jalapeno. Anything. Any, any chili you can find is fine. Yeah, I'm going to let you do that because I know I'll rub my eyes for 20 minutes and <clears throat> cry all day. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But well, you can use any pepper. So we can use Aji or the Aji Panka from Peru. But we, we like to use this Dutch finger chili. It has a good peppery taste. And what's the difference between this and just like a regular... It's, it's this is really good for the texture as well. It's a really crunchy it's chili. Crunch, yeah. We yeah. actually wash away most of the spice and then we put it in for colour and crunch. So you don't need to find the spiciest chili in the world to use for this dish to be honest. We keep the seeds in and probably wash it. Yeah. But that's the secret. Okay. So he's gonna run that under cold water. Yep. And then just for you. He says I hope that's so an instruction. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's just how I chop my onions. <laughs> Let me take some. I guess just some roughly chopped, that's probably enough there, so. Yeah. Because we're going to serve and eat those raw, we're going to wash them off as well. So they um, they lose that smell, you know, that makes your eyes go. Yeah. The smell of raw onion and the onion bread. Yeah. Mind you, so, the taste is worth it. Yeah. Okay, so this will get me close to the seeds, but you don't mind if the seeds go in, right? No, no, it's fine. So I spent hours at home obsessing with the seeds, picking so them out. I'm worrying about people having that too spicy. Yeah, exactly. Well, right? So this just makes it a bit milder, but gives you that good pepper taste. Okay. You can uh, tell everyone what this is. Mushroom. So that's, you've heard of oyster mushroom? Yeah. So this is a king oyster, which is known in Japan as iringi. Okay. Which is, again, like the difference between... Got you. talking about the fish. This is, this the is, button mushroom's right down yeah, there, yeah? This is, yeah, not even on the same train. Okay. <laughs> this king oyster iringi is really good for barbecuing or you can marinate them and roast them and they absorb a lot of flavour. I love flavor. mushrooms. I'm um, a so, so big mushroom eater. Yeah, so yeah. if you just cut that into half. Yeah. Thanks Mike. Excellent. Yeah. And we'll just put them to one side then we're going to just uh, saute them off. Okay. Yeah, and then we're going to mix them in our salad off. Okay. okay. Take the yellow tail. Okay, and this is a sashimi knife as we spoke about before. Mm -hmm. But the difference between this Be knife and that knife. Be careful, well, don't do that. Sorry. Blimey, there's, that's put my teeth on edge. There's no blade on this side. Right. The blade's on this side, so you can have it. So you see the angle that that blade is cut there? Yeah. That's cut for sashimi. So that's the angle 
you would cut sashimi off. So you wouldn't use that knife, it's sharpened at 245 degrees angle. So it would cut straight down. It's very difficult to cut in a straight line with this knife. But for the likes of our, you know, as common as watching at home, how could we replicate this enough? You can use it with that knife, knife, but you just have to turn your knife more of an angle and cut it that way. Okay. Yeah. Or, or you could have a thicker piece of fish no. and just cut it straight down. But it's thin cut straight down. So because this fish is, depending on the thickness here, uh -huh. depends on how long you're going to cut out sashimi and whatnot. So for example, at home you'd cut it straight, like with, like that way, yeah. with that knife. But with this knife, we'll cut from the bottom, using the length of the knife, that's why they're a long knife as well. Yeah. As close to the edge of the board as you can, because your hand can have to go lower than yeah. the board. Yeah, you so you don't want to be here, your knife doesn't go down. And then you can just draw from here with two fingers and just cut backwards the, the slice, and you finish straight, okay? Mm -hmm. You just keep cutting sashimi like that. You start with the tail that's a bit um, sinewy. sinewy. I'm going to cut enough for this, for our dish. I don't know how hungry you are. What are we going to eat? Really hungry? Every time I see this dish, I get hungry. So that's how we're going to cut the pieces like this. Okay. And then after we're going to go through this. Mike can explain how we make yep. this. What is that, Mike? So here we have uh, just made an orange powder. So we peel the orange first, and then we blanch it. So it takes all the bitterness out. Right. And then, so that means we have boiling water, yeah. we add the skin of the orange, and then all that bitterness comes out. And then we put it into ice cold water, drain it off, and then we put it in a dehydrator for about six hours. So this is where I, I could do this at home, could I? You could do it at home. How do I dehydrate it? Just leave it outside. Orange. Oh, okay. Just leave it outside. Oh, okay. But it air might just, it, just air drying, so okay. it might just take a little bit longer than six hours. So what we have is a machine, it has a fan, and it air dries it. So outside, you can just leave it outside. Okay. And now it's summertime, you can probably leave it out in the sun. Not with those boxes that I've got problems with. <laughs> so the other thing you can do at home is just use a, a cheese grater mm -hmm. on the fine side of the holes. Yeah. Yeah. And just grate and just that and use it fresh. Yeah. It doesn't have to be dehydrated, it's just Mike likes to show off. Well, no, it does taste better, doesn't it? It gives it a bit of intensity. Yeah. You're on Mike's side, yeah? Yeah. No, I'm on the side of the intense <laughs> orange powder. Okay. A jazzed up way of eating sashimi, this dish is a dressed sashimi. Everything that, that sings in the mouth here is all about the dressing and the marinade. Yeah. And I know you won't give me the recipes. But can I at least take some stuff home in a jar? Yep. Yeah. Yeah? Because I have friends coming over this week and I could so impress them with your food. <laughs>
definitely make a mess for your friends when they come. Yeah, as long as I can get myself some kingfish. I do have a really good local fishmonger. It would rise, I'm sure, to the challenge. Some of that Japan sun tomorrow. Right. So, these. these. Now, what are these? Because these really add flavour. Add texture, yeah. So, you have more than 3,000 types of potato that they have in Peru. And we can't use all of them here, but this is the purple variety. So, they're just sliced. Fried off lightly to make chips with, and then they're the potatoes. Yeah, yeah, purple potato. You've had the purple puree with it mm. probably before. So where does the truffle taste come from? Yeah. A little truffle. Oil. Intense orange powder. Wow, it's probably the most beautiful thing I've ever made. And then we have the coriander. Okay. I'm just going to decorate it because that's what I'm good at. It's so pretty. So a little bit of truffle on in there. That's it. See, I've got this at home and I just chuck it on everything. I love it. Even just plain pasta, the yeah. Yeah. and that. that. Oh. Actually goes really well with scrambled eggs for breakfast. A few drops of that and that's oh. actually really nice. Right. See you then. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Let's go and taste it. Yeah, yeah not that I've really contributed much to the flavour. It's because you made it. It looks, it looks amazing. It looks alright, doesn't it? So seriously, do you never get do you never tire of these flavours? No, if I'm away, I I have this feeling mm. that I you know I want to eat it. I miss the anticucho, I miss all you know the meat latte. Okay. Mm. You've done that before. I haven't. You must have eaten it before. I'm not great cooking fish and I eat a lot of fish. It's really good. The cutting of the tomatoes is very good. Really, really good cut tomatoes. <laughs> Sells the dish. That was kind of my contribution, that and the flowers. But these are really good, you should concentrate more on this. It's the oringi. The texture of those mushrooms are really, really special. Do you know what though? It feels wrong when I eat this dish to just solo out anything. Everything, it has to be a combined yeah. mouthful of something. So yeah, I've got at least three things going on that. Mmm. 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 Are you used to sharing this dish as well? Because I've noticed before when you come and eat here in the restaurant that you order for the whole table, you pop in 10 minutes late, and then you say, I just want five or four or five portions of Nikai Sashimi just for me to eat. No, I, 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 I always order two of these because I'm evangelical about it. I push it on other people. I'm like, you've got to eat this, you've got to eat this. And then they love it, which means there's none left for me, so I have to have another dish. One portion always gets all the dark. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Perfect. Who came up with this? Team it was a team effort. Yeah. It's a team effort. We have to look at the best sashimi dishes around and try to improve on them. You know, so there is other stuff like similar things like yellowtail jalapeno. Mm. People have that combination in other dishes. Well, that's that's that would normally be my go-to sushi dish. Yeah. So this is just taking that dish to the next level. You know, trying to get it better. Mm. That is um, that's the one you did really well. That does make That's how I got to know you. Yeah, you rewrote the menu when you came to the other place. Mm. But only because that's just the best sashimi dish for me. We do that here, we'd like to do that a lot. We get yeah. ingredients that are not on the menu. We have suppliers here that choose what you want for seasonal and local stuff. Yeah. They send it and we write the menu for that day. So we have the signature dishes that are going to stay all year round. And then we have special things. Mm. Sometimes Mike makes a dish put out a tweet and this is our special tonight, who wants to reserve it? And they tweet him back and say, I've ordered it. Yeah. And it's yeah, uh, booked and sold for. Really and we had some <coughs> really good tomato recently. You did some amazing food for my birthday. Yeah, that cake. was sensational. The cake was off the scale. And my son loves coming here to cook. He's the youngest Nikkei boy. Yeah, he is. He is. It's the only way I can get him to eat fish.